I had 21 pro fights all across Canada, some of them for pay-per-view and some of them for world championships. And in my 16th fight, I got knocked out cold in 2012. And yeah, it was just suffering. You know, I started to realize that the reason I wanted to do MMA was because I, I wanted validation. I wanted to feel like I was enough. So I started doing this deeper journey, going through this deeper journey of discovering who I really am and who I really want to be and how I really want to show up in the world. And it turns out it was very, very different than who I was showing up as up until that point. So I had to create a whole new identity. And, and I realized that creating the identity wasn't really what I wanted to do. I wanted to figure out who I really was. I didn't want to pretend to be someone I'm not to get accepted and get loved by others. That, so we're all born with these two fundamental needs, the need to be accepted and the need to be authentic. And a lot of us, myself included, uh, sacrifice this, this authenticity so that we can be accepted. The power you seek lies within you, as we are each infinite beings living a human experience. The truth of who and what we are has been hidden from us until now. Awaken, my friends, to this new reality that we are in fact creating everything through the power and the gift of our wonderful imagination. Join me as I unlock the secrets of our past and reveal the truth that has been clouded in this veil we call life. What reality will you choose to create today? The choice is yours. Welcome, my friends, to my reality practice. And welcome, everybody, to Reality Practice Quantum Creations. This is a show where I interview guests who have had quantum leaps in their reality in personal or professional evolution and they've literally rewritten the story of their life their own version of reality they've completely rewritten it and now they're sharing the lessons that they've learned from that journey in a quick little 15 minute uh interview here today so without further delay let's welcome our second time to the show guest uh ricky goodall Ricky's known as the shamanic warrior, and he embraces the idea that he is not really Ricky Goodall, but is in fact God, the creator, and the conscious universe, all being manifested into a version of his own higher self, simply pretending to be Ricky Goodall. So today, he empowers brave leaders to discover and become their true, authentic higher selves in order to collectively create together a heaven on earth. Without further delay, Ricky, welcome to the show, my spiritual brother. How are you doing today? Yeah. Thanks, Joey. Yeah, I'm doing great. It's a, a public workspace today, beautiful scenery, really nice spot to be. Yeah. Let's dive right into it. You know, your life, you made a massive U-turn a few years ago uh, that led you in an entirely different path than the one you were on. At one time, you were an up-and-coming MMA fighter. And you had hopes of making it to the UFC, becoming one of the top fighters in the world. And, you know, life doesn't always give us the journey, the path that we expect to be on. It, it kind of throws us for loops sometimes. And that sounds like exactly what happened to you. Do you want to share that experience? Yeah, yeah, exactly, Joey. I was, uh, I was pro professionally fighting for eight years. I had 21 pro fights all across Canada, some of them for pay-per-view and some of them for world championships. And in my 16th fight, I got knocked out cold in 2012. And uh, I was out for almost two minutes and, and got up and did an interview with the post-fight announcer and then left the cage and did an interview with a, with a newspaper and was wheeled out into an ambulance and a stretcher. And to this day, I don't remember any of it. So that sort of sent me down a, a, a rock bottom that led to uh, what, I, what I would call a spiritual awakening. I went to the movie The Secret to try to change my life because in 2006, I watched the movie and it helped me become an MMA fighter. So I went back to it and realized that I had a lot deeper work I had to do to, to create the kind of life that I wanted. Hmm. You said you had a lot deeper work that you had to do. You know, you wanted one thing. You had this one vision, this one dream. And then all of a sudden, it just got completely shifted on you. What do you think was pulling you? What was that? What was it that made you go back to basically reinvent yourself all over again? Yeah, well, it's just suffering. You know, I started to realize that the reason I wanted to do MMA was because I, I wanted validation. I wanted to feel like I was enough. 
and I thought that this sport would help me feel that. And the, and the further I got into it, the, the less I actually enjoyed being around myself, the less I was actually happy with myself. So I started doing this deeper work, rec discovering that who I was showing up as in life was sort of like this programmed reality that I was creating so I could be ac accepted and feel like I was enough. So I started doing this deeper journey, going through this deeper journey of discovering who I really am and who I really want to be and how I really want to show up in the world. And it turns out it was very, very different than who I was showing up as up until that point. Hmm. It sounds like, you know, most everybody, we're all trying to find our tribe. We're all trying to find where we fit in. And I think that's our ego. We're battling there in terms of you were trying to fit in, but something was pulling you that, that deeper inside was pulling you. And it, it must have been scary. You know, what, what were you feeling? What were you thinking when you were having to go against the grain here from what what seemed like the right path, you know, what, was there yeah. intuition involved? What was this that you think? Yeah. Yeah. Good question. I mean, before I became a, com a professional competitor, I was creating my, my ego, creating this identity as this professional athlete. And I, and I worked hard for years to create this identity. And then all of a sudden I didn't want to do it anymore. So I had to create a whole new identity. And, and I realized that Creating the identity wasn't really what I wanted to do. I wanted to figure out who I really was. I didn't want to pretend to be someone I'm not to get accepted and get loved by others. So it was really, it was very humbling. You know, a lot of humility, a lot of shame and guilt came up of, of needing to just be honest with myself about who I am and how I'm showing up in my relationships. And it was just a, a complete humbling. My brother once said, sometimes God lets you hit rock bottom so you know that God's the rock at the bottom. Mm, that was I really love awakening that. To me. Yeah, it was really about recognizing that my true mission and my true purpose is, is guided. It's not something that's that's led by my ego. Wow, I, I, that's that's a beautiful way to think of it. You know, God's basically God's always there to catch us. You know, yeah. we can fall as far as possible, but at the end of the day, at the bottom of the cliff, He's right there to pick us up. So beautiful right. way of saying that. So you said you had all this, you had a lot of suffering, this shame, this guilt. Obviously, that led you down the path of healing. You know, how important is this idea of healing and going on a healing journey in terms of having the ability to start creating our reality? How important is it? Yeah, yeah. Thanks for asking. I mean, I, I think for me, my understanding is that we're all born with these two fundamental needs, the need to be accepted and the need to be authentic. And a lot of us, myself included, uh, sacrifice this, this authenticity so that we can be accepted. And so that created for me this deep shame and this deep feeling of not being enough and not being worthy. And that feeling that the, those painful emotions were just stored inside of my nervous system, stored inside of my mo emotional body. So in order for me to become my true authentic self, I had to unbecome and let go of my false self. And that's a very painful process because I've created so many beliefs, so many patterns, so many habits of being this inauthentic self that I just had to face a lot of, a lot of uh, I guess, like face a lot of dark parts of myself that, that I wasn't really aware that I would have to face. And going through that process is very humbling and, and uh, very, uh, yeah, just, just a painful process overall because I had to really accept things that I'd done in my past and and why, why I behaved in certain ways. And I discovered that all of the ways I, I, I behaved that created pain for myself and others were actually related to this inauthentic self. It was this false self or this ego that I created to keep myself safe. So all of the ways that I behaved that created pain for others was actually a defense mechanism to try to stop myself from feeling pain. So as painful as mm -hmm. the process was to, to wake up to this, it was also very liberating because it helped me let go of the guilt and the shame and the feeling at fault for the way I behaved that, that it created pain for myself and others. Mm, I, I, I can um, remember when I went through similar, you know, it's kind of like it's that dark night of the soul that's always spoken about. And it's dark. It's scary to kind of go down those pathways, but it is so liberating. It's so freeing. It's something I'd never, I would do it over and over and over again if I had that chance, knowing what the other side looks like, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, exactly. It's necessary work. And I, a lot of it, I think, you know, it ties back to this whole concept of compassion and forgiveness of others, but mostly of ourselves. You know, we're, yeah. for, for forgetting that we're in this illusion and for forgetting, mm -hmm. for believing the illusion, I guess. 
You know, what did, yeah. what specifically did you have to do to go back and, you know, really forgive yourself to have compassion and see the, see the beauty behind all the chaos that you'd created? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, th doing the deep work, you know, like, uh, confessing everything I'd ever done to hurt myself or others to another human being, uh, going through all of the traumas I had experienced and forgiving the people who I was resentful toward and, and uh, making amends with people that I've harmed in the past. You know, just uh, it, I'm still going through this work. You know, I think it's ongoing, and, and we learn more as we go and as we get deeper. And, and really, it's it's about making the unconscious conscious. You know, shedding light on the darkness, and just being willing to face the parts of ourselves that maybe we don't want to face. Because those dark those dark parts of myself, that that unconscious pain, if I don't make it conscious, then it runs my life. And so I really need to make it conscious in order to to be free of it. And that's really been the process. It's making the unconscious conscious. I like that. It, I mean, it's at the end of the day, it's the awareness of it. That, mm -hmm. However you want to say it, the, being coming conscious of it, coming aware of it. You know, I, I think an important thing that you said was it's an ongoing process. I don't feel like we ever fully, you know, if we ever fully achieved the end result, I guess then we would be living in heaven or heaven on earth, right? So it's like mm -hmm. it's a never-ending process of always getting better we're always going to find new demons we're always going to find darkness that's still hiding there underneath the light right yeah maybe i mean i think that what's known as the deep work or or what's uh, the great work uh, they call it in ancient esoteric systems is is the process of purging all of this pain and so the idea of reaching enlightenment or the end of suffering or the end of correction or absolute happiness they call it in cusco the shamans that i've worked with it's this place where we're happy for no good reason. We're just happy because. And so I think that's the ultimate goal, is to reach a state of contentment and happiness for no reason. And, uh, and, and it's something that we sort of shift into gradually. I don't know if that means that we never grow anymore, or that we don't find anything else that we can, we can upgrade. I think the upgrading process happens forever. But I think that we can reach heaven on earth in, in this lifetime. I think that we can reach the state of, of consciousness that they call enlightenment or freedom and liberation. And I think doing the work is the key to getting there. I love what you just said there. You know, it's, and I think you, you said it better than I did. You know, the work never ends. We're always continually upgrading. But you said, you know, we have to purge, try and completely purge all of the darkness that's inside of us. And I, I agree. I think at some point in time, we can all achieve that removal of all of the darkness and that would be like you said that heavy heaven on earth so i think we're i think we're in full agreement on it uh i just you you clear you said it much more clear than i did on mm -hmm. there so uh as we're finishing up we're wrapping up the interview today uh tell us a little bit about your pilgrimage program you're just mm -hmm. getting has it already launched or it's getting ready to launch now i've, yeah, I've gone through a little so. bit of it and it's amazing from what no, i've already gone through thank you yeah so so the pilgrimage is a self-ascension system for conscious coaches, healers, and leaders who want to dissolve their false identity or their ego and become their higher self. So it's a process, and it's a community, and, and it's, a, it's a course, and it's really a system. So I recognize that there are really three Ts that we have to access if we want to become our higher self. We have to have tribe, we have to have theory, so we have to understand what our higher self is, and we have to do the deep work. And so the pilgrimage launched back in July of last year and I closed, closed the doors of enrollment until next month, uh, later in next month, because we just have so many people that are doing really well and we're upgrading everything. And so the program uh, opens again next month for 25 people. And it's really, it's, it's a community, it's a mastermind community, really. We, we have people from all over the world that are part of this community. And the whole idea is that we support each other because I believe that we are the average of the five people we spend the most time around. Jim, Jim Rohn said that. So if I spend time around five people who are broke and sick and unhappy, then I'm going to be the sixth. And if I spend time around five people who are successful living as their higher self, then I'm going to be the sixth. So what I've done is I've created a system to be able to help people ascend to their higher self using theory and, and, and practice. So actually understanding the concepts, uh, being surrounded by other people who are doing the same thing, and then also having actual assignments to take them through the process of the deep work of actually transforming their ego and their false identity so that their true higher self can just shine through. It's not something they have to strive to become. It's actually something they have to unbecome. They have to unbecome who they aren't so that who they really are can come to the surface. 
So the, yeah. I have the link on my, on my Instagram profile to sign up to the waiting list. Uh, the waiting list is starting to, to build now and I'll be sending out more information as the program gets ready. That's fantastic. And yeah, I, I, I enrolled in it and you had sent me a version of it to try. And I've, I think I'm through module two or three at this point and really impactful, uh, really deep stuff, you know, and I can see how you can take your time really working through each step of it, uh, mm -hmm. unlocking more and more. So what, Ricky, what, what would you say for the last question here? What is the most important thing you think the listeners, the viewers should know as far as when they're attempting to take back control of creating their reality? What, what is the most important aspect here that you want people to walk away from? Yeah, question everything. It's question mm. everything. We have no reason everything, to believe that any, everything. Question everything. We have no reason to believe that anything is real. So we need to question everything, and most importantly, our own thoughts and the stories we tell ourselves. So the greatest lie I think we tell ourselves is that we're just human. Roger Bannister was the first person to run the four-minute mile. He was the first person to run a mile in four minutes. Before he did it, nobody had done it in recorded history, and doctors said that if you do it, your heart could explode. Once he did it, it took the next person three months. So Roger Bannister questioned the, the narrative. He questioned what society told him was possible, and, and then he, he defied the odds and, and did the impossible. So I think it's important that we question everything, most importantly the, the stories that we tell ourselves about what's possible. God, I love that. You know, question everything, everybody. Everything in our reality may or may not be real, but at least question it. You know, question what's right for you. What's right for one person may not be right for another. You know, everybody's truth is their own individual, unique version of it. So question it. Why not? What, what do we have to lose, right? Yeah. Well, hey, Ricky, I want to say thank you so much for popping on here today, sharing some wisdom and some of your journey with the uh, viewers. And I, I appreciate it so much, brother. Thank you for joining us. Thanks to everybody watching today who's tuned in or who will watch this uh, after it's already posted. Uh, make sure to give it a heart, like, share it, uh, comment, follow Ricky. Uh, let's see, where can they find you, Ricky? What's your uh, handle? Yeah, it's just uh, my Instagram is just Ricky Goodall HFX, and uh, they can check out my website, rickygoodall.com. Fantastic. All right, again, thank you so much, and everybody out there, until next time, stay blessed and continue to always ask yourself, what reality are you choosing to create today? Thanks, Joey. Yeah, talk to you guys later.